Now these days, uh, a lot of the surveyors uh, during the oral exam are asking uh, students questions about carriage of refrigerated cargoes. That's because uh, a lot of students, they sail on cargo ships or tankers or offshore vessels and they don't have much experience about refrigerated cargoes and surveyors want the students to have some knowledge about this. So I've made a video summarizing the carriage of refrigerated cargoes. Uh, so I hope this is useful for your learning and to answer questions in the oral examination. So for carriage of uh, refrigerated cargoes, uh, your ship must have uh, insulated compartments provided. So insulation protects the cargo and allows the cooling of the cargoes and maintaining of temperatures of the cargo. So mean, means of cooling for the cargo should also be provided. And the means are either provided through circulating the brine uh, or by blowing cold air through the compartment or by the use of both the methods. So that is one. So the if the compartment is insulated and the cold air is circulated, then the temperature of the cargo is easier to maintain the temperature of the cargo as well as the temperature of the compartment, which helps to preserve the cargo at the temperature. Uh, refrigerated cargoes are mainly divided into three classes. The first one is the frozen cargoes. Uh, now this class of cargo is carried in the rock hard frozen condition. Examples being beef, mutton, lamb, butter, fish, they comprise most of the shipments here. The temperature for this cargo ranges from about minus 8 degrees Celsius for beef, pork, butter and to about minus 12 degrees Celsius for the carriage of fish. Uh, the second category of uh, refrigerated cargoes are the chilled cargoes. Now this class of cargoes is carried at a temperature of about 0 to minus 2 degrees Celsius. The commodities in under this category include uh, carcasses, uh, beer, cheese, eggs, fresh vegetables and medicines. Uh, for this cargo, it, the necessity of maintaining a uniform temperature with chilled meat demands that all precautions are taken to ensure that recording thermometers are examined and tested before loading commences because uh, the thermometers are what are used to monitor the temperature of the compartment and when monitoring the temperature becomes a very critical aspect of the carriage of the cargoes. And if the thermometers are not maintained, they are not working correctly, then the mariners will not be able to assess whether the temperature of the cargo is being maintained correctly or not. And if the cargo spoils, this is large quantities of cargoes, uh, spoiling of which will uh, provide a big complication for the carriers in terms of the claims from the shippers and the cargo owners. Uh, the introduction of about 10% by volume of CO2 can also enhance the carrying time of the chilled meat to about 30 days. So this is in addition to the cold circulation of air provided by the brine. Uh, air cooled cargoes uh, is the third category of refrigerated cargoes and uh, under this category fruits come. Uh, under this category where the carrying temperatures are in about uh, positive or plus degrees of Celsius. Uh, there is no negative temperatures to be maintained for the fruits. And now in the process of ripening, these uh, commodities, they give off CO2. So this type of cargo, because mostly it's fruits, when they start to ripen, they start to give off uh, carbon dioxide or CO2. Uh, what happens with this is that this reduces the rate of uh, respiration and consequently the ripening process. Uh, hence, the carbon dioxide content must not be allowed to go beyond 3% by volume and fresh air must be introduced into the compartment several times during the voyage. So this helps in the circulation of the air if it starts to get saturated with carbon dioxide. You cannot let carbon dioxide get saturated in that compartment, otherwise it will delay the ripening of the fruits. So now that we've talked about the three categories of the cargo, let's start talking about the cooling systems which are used. So the cooling uh, in the refrigerated ships uh, may be affected by circulating the cold brine. Like I said, this is one of the method through pipes on the sides and deck head. And the pipes which are circulating this cold brine are called the brine grid pipes. Now each of these pipes have their own independent supply and return which is direct to the evaporator and brine tank. So the brine tank from the brine tank, individual pipes originate and each of these pipes have their individual supply. Uh, and these uh, pipes are circulating the cold brine, which helps to maintain the temperature of the compartment. Now the advantage in this system lies in the fact that should one grid become choked, so if the sum of the pipelines become choked and they are not working, then the temperature may be maintained by increasing the brine supply through the other grids. So maintenance is easier while maintaining the temperature of the compartment. So the other grids are supplied with more brine 
to help keep the temperature maintained now the other method of cooling system like i told you before is to blow the cold air through the compartment by means of the brine pipes as well so these are called the batteries of brine pipes or the collection or a, or a group of brine pipes are known as brine nests now the air in the chambers is kept circulating by means of fans with the extractor fans withdrawing the heated and moisture charged air passing it through the brine batteries where it is cooled and dried after which it is returned to the chamber by fans being conveyed ducts through the ducts led alongside the bulkheads and sides so what uh, the the cooling air system what it basically uses if i can simply explain this to you it uses the air in the compartment itself it doesn't generate air any of its own it basically uses the compartment air and recirculates it so it it draws in the air uh, which is there in the compartment cools it and then recirculates it so th th that makes it cooling easier because it's using the recirculated air it is not generating any air of its own all right so and the fans are used the exhaust fans or the extractor fans are used so they no, we don't say exhaust fans we say extractor fans because extractor fans can suck in the compartment air uh, that is the purpose of it and then by cooling it uh, again recirculating it becomes easier all right so i hope you got both the systems in one there is a cold liquid which is a cold brine which is circulated in the other way in the other system they basically use the compartment air and then it helps to keep the compartment cooled now the system of cooling air can be used along with the brine grid system as well for frozen cargoes or singly used in case of chilled and air cooled cargoes now you can have both the systems on the ship as well and many of these ships have both the systems especially the ships which are carrying the frozen cargoes which have to be carried at minus temperatures uh, and severe minus temperature we are talking about minus 10 minus 12 degrees temperatures in that maybe just one system is not effective enough so both the systems are there when the carbonic acid contents of chamber air exceed the prescribed percentage for air cool cargo especially some of the air is discharged into the atmosphere and replaced by fresh outside air which is led to the coolers where it is dried and cooled before joining the circulating system so again we come back to the cold air system and in the cold air system if there is uh, the because we are using the air of within the compartment Uh, like i said before especially with air cooled cargoes which are the fruits the fruits keep releasing the carbon dioxide now if the carbon dioxide is kept releasing and it gets saturated in the compartment air uh, we cannot keep recirculating the air because now that air has full of carbonic content or carbonic acid so to keep the air content fresh uh, if the carbonic content becomes too much then the air from the outside is sucked in and replaced with the air existing in the compartment so a recirculation of air also takes place fresh air and that air which is sucked from the outside is also cooled before being circulated into the compartment so where adjacent compartments contain cargoes one of which is liable to taint or spoil than in the other uh, separate and distinct cooling and air circulating systems are necessary so if two compartments cargo carry cargo which may one of which may get tainted with the other then of course you will have separate distinct cooling air circulating systems for each compartment uh let's talk about preparation of holds for taking refrigerated cargo now when you are preparing holds make sure that you check for the insulation like i said insulation helps in maintaining the temperature it helps maintaining the cold temperature that is created through the cooling systems and if there is any deficiency make sure that you correct it uh insulated plugs also should be fitted to the ventilators to prevent any kind of leakage or any kind of air coming in which may lower the temperature uh, that will uh, that that will not be good for the cargo of course make sure that the chambers or the cargo holds are airtight um if there are any baffle boards and remove the baffle boards and the brine grid pipes through which the brine is circulated should be cleaned and pressure tested to about 1 and 1/2 times the normal working pressure for leakages and the deficiency should be made good so the the pipes should be tested for leakages and if there are any deficiencies you can make good the deficiencies the bilges of the cargo compartment should be thoroughly cleaned dried and sweetened uh, the compartment to be well ventilated and dried as well uh, continuing with the preparation for holds or preparation of holds for taking refrigerated cargoes all suctions double bottom manhole covers sounding pipe connections should be tested the bilge inside the holes as well as insulated plugs over the manhole lids should be cogged to render them airtight all right uh, refrigerating machinery must be inspected and repaired if not required and must be presented for inspection by the classification society surveyor the compartment should be thoroughly cleaned 
it should have no smell of previous cargo all the damage done should be removed and the clean dunnage must be replaced in the compartment and pre-cooled before loading the cargo the drains must be sealed with brine traps to prevent the possibility of warm air or taint odors arising from the bilges because that will taint the cargo well. pre-cooling of the compartment starts about 24 hours before loading the cargo and the pre-cooling temperature is considerably lower than the transit temperature because you need to lower the compartment quickly so that pre-cooling temperature is lower but once you start with the carriage uh, then you again maintain the temperature as per the requirement of the kind of cargo you're carrying now after the cleaning has been done and preparation is ready the spaces are inspected by a classification surveyor who also checks the refrigeration plant and the cooling uh, talking about the loading and the handling of cargo, make sure that you are conversant with all loading regulations. Uh, there should be close cooperation between the engine, deck and shore department. And the engine department, of course, for the maintenance of the refrigeration systems and uh, the shore department as well, because uh, when you are loading cargo, you are all working as a team and you have to make sure that you get all the information available about the cargo from the shore department, for, especially about the temperatures to be maintained during the voyage. Uh, run and stop the blowers in time during breaks and cargo operations. Uh, remove any kind of snow information, a snow formation rather on the brine pipes without damaging the cargo. Ensure that channels between the cargoes are clear for the circulation of air. Uh, ensure there is proper hygiene to be maintained by the people who are working in the compartment. Uh, canvas nets can be used for the slinging of the meat. Uh, trays should be used for crates of cheese, cases of butter and cases of fruit. Make sure that you maintain a strict scrutiny of the time of receiving cargoes. Many of these cargoes sometimes are pilferage or stolen as well. Uh, condition of the packaging should be good. Uh, any kind of wet and damaged packages should not be accepted. Mm, fragile packages uh, which can be easily broken and damage the cargo should not be accepted as well. Uh, frozen cargo should be rock hard. Uh, the packages should not have any blood stains on them because uh, that indicates that the cargo was thawed and then refroze or something like that. So make sure that uh, frozen packages are always rock hard. Uh, check the temperature of the cargo at random because of course there is a lot of cargo being loaded. You cannot uh, load all the temperature but every now and then randomly uh, check the temperature of the cargo being loaded so that you know that uh, the at the time of the loading the cargo was maintained at the right temperatures. Uh, make sure that you check for any kind of mold growth which, which has fungus or mold growth which has not set in on the carcasses and uh, make sure that the fruits are not in an advanced state of ripeness because during the voyage they will anyway go through the process of ripening and if they become overripe and spoil or rot they might not only spoil themselves but also spoil the surrounding fruits and then the uh, discharge port will not accept the cargo from you. Hooks and chains used for the hanging chilled carcasses must be sterilized and pre-cooled. Uh, floor dunnage should be laid in line with the airflow. Generally speaking, frozen carcasses do not require any dunnage other than the ordinary floor dunnage. Cargo should be kept free of contact with brine pipes and installations by means of baffle boards and sawdust may be used in some cases to provide insulation to decks. Uh, during the voyage, precautions to be maintained, maintenance of the plant to be carried out to provide correct temperatures. That is the main essence of carrying refrigerated cargoes that you have to maintain them at the correct temperature. So, of course, refrigeration plants, cooling systems, associated pipeline and equipment should be always maintained and checked. Uh, must maintain the temperatures and log the temperatures at regular intervals. Make sure that correct concentration of carbon dioxide is maintained when carrying chilled meat stuff. Uh, precautions against pilferage of cargo or stealing of cargo should be observed. Like I told you before, the refrigerated cargoes are often prone to being stolen. So make sure you observe precautions regarding that. And stability of the vessel when carrying chilled cargoes or chilled carcasses hung on the beams should be considered as it may get influenced by it.